Welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast, where we sit down and have real conversations with business leaders that have been where you are. During these interviews, we'll dive into what it takes to improve systems and champion processes that maximize performance. Each week, our trailblazing guests share their experiences and understanding of the workforce to help inspire change, challenge our thinking, and share what it takes to successfully travel the road to profitability. Now here's our host, co-founder and chief evangelist of About Time and WorkMax, Mike Merrill. Hello and welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast. I am your host, Mike Merrill, and today we are joined by my good friend, Mr. Ryan Groth. Ryan is the CEO of Sales Transformation Group, or STG, and today we are going to be talking about the need for professionalism in the workplace and also how that will benefit your workforce and how you're able to actually increase your productivity with the team that you already have existing. So thanks, Ryan, for joining us today. Looking forward to the conversation. Uh, Thanks, Mike. Super glad to be here. Awesome. And you're calling in from not sunny Miami now. You're in from uh, sunny Dallas. Is that right? Yeah, sunny Dallas. (laughs) So how long did you live in Maui for? Yeah, we were in Maui for three years, and uh, prior to that, we are actually in South Florida. So this is the first time we're not in a traditional tropical area. Awesome. Well, that's cool. Well, excited to have you here on uh, on the continental United States soil. <laughs> awesome. Well, so uh, I think just to start the conversation off, uh, you know, obviously we're in some interesting and strange times in the marketplace for all kinds of reasons, but... Um, you know, there's environmental and market imposed uh, challenges that I think contractors are facing right now. Um, what can you share about what you think might be holding a lot of contractors back in dealing with the environment that we're faced with today? Yeah, so I, what I see is that, you know, in the typical, it's, you know, things are great. Let's, you know, the sun's shining, we're doing well. Uh, what happens is a lot of contractors, I notice, they start to take it for granted and they stop to, you know, they don't work on the skills that are starting to become very valuable in times like these. So when you have, you know, issues with labor, you have issues, um, when you have issues with labor, you have issues with uh, demand, you know, getting material, you know, you have issues with uh, people not wanting to spend a lot of money. When you have certain skills around your sales process and the sales function from contact to contract, and you're able to implement those skills, those start to really pay off. And when you, when companies don't have any of those in place, uh, I think it starts to, you know, they start to feel that big time because they started to lose, lose those, those skills weren't really in place. They're not really conditioned because things were good and they took it for granted. Yeah, that's a great point. So, I mean, just to back up a little bit, I mean, you got into this space uh, through, you know, an interesting journey. You, you work for some different companies you sharpen your skills. And right now you're basically in the sales training business to help uh, companies train their sales force to be more efficient. Is that, is that right? And what, why did you, why did you choose the path you're on and why are you so passionate about it? Yeah. To me, I saw, you know, my parents have a, a contracting business and struggles so that really impacted me. And I think that the, their lack of getting work and keeping a full pipeline and a full backlog and like a growth trajectory, I think really is the cause of their, of their failure. Uh, and then I saw a, I got mentored by a large commercial contractor in South Florida who became more sales oriented and grew their business in the negotiated market where they weren't dealing with GCs and weren't dealing with a competitive bid situation, but they were truly the trusted advisor and partner. So I saw the model kind of demonstrated before me at a level that uh, I'd realized the whole industry admired. And when I, when I saw that the industry admired it, I was like, well, it's, it's not rocket science. It just takes a focus, a strategy. It takes training. It takes investment in the things that you're not currently investing in, but will pay off and, and give a, a return. So when I started to work there, I saw that the, the entire industry lacked um, a strong system and a process and a strategy to break into a more negotiated relational sales environment. And whenever I saw people do that the right way, uh, I started to see tremendous growth. And for me, I'm passionate because, I mean, look, if you have a strategy to put money in your pocket and par- money in the pockets of people, and y- you know, you just know that the only thing be- missing between you and getting to that result is discipline and a process and commitment to being your best. As a former athlete, you know, professional collegiate professional baseball player, 
that to me was like, oh, this is a fun new sport. Like I can be successful. I put in what I want and I get what I want. And that sales variable that I think a lot of people under appreciate or maybe under focus, they don't focus enough of their team's time or resources on when I, when that started to become applied into the business that I work with, it, it started to just transform the industry or transform lives and people. And that really helped that really fueled a passion for me to do it at scale. All right. So you said some really great things in, in, uh, in that, that last comment. And I think, you know, one of the takeaways for me is, you know, I was down in the Dallas area, ironically, with one of our mutual customers, K-Post Roofing and Waterproofing, and uh, good friends of mine and also yours, um, Keith Post and Steve Little, uh, when we were recording a prior episode of the Mobile Workforce podcast, they had mentioned just having come from your sales transformation group event and how deeply impactful that experience was for them and their team. And for for those of the listeners or, or folks that may be familiar with uh, K-Post Roofing and Waterproofing, they are a wildly successful organization. They do a lot of things really, really well, uh, including sales, I think. Um, so I don't, I don't think, and I'll go out on a limb, I don't think they had huge gaps in what they were doing from a traditional standpoint in uh, you know, the roofing industry and, and their sales teams out there you know, generating business. But obviously they had some really profound takeaways and some learnings from that event. What do you think that a company that, and I think this is the most important thing, if if you feel like you're already doing really well, and this doesn't have to be roofing, it could, it, you know, any industry, any of the trades, uh, any of the construction companies that, that we serve and the listenership for this podcast, um, I think can gain some wisdom from this, but what do companies that already feel like they're doing well and have uh, things kind of dialed in and, and finally lubed and, and operating efficiently have to gain at an event like that or learning from the things that you're sharing with the industry? Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just think about this, like, let's think of all the, 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 the variables of what would make somebody successful. They have a great brand, Right, the great leadership, um, and then you have the salespeople, and then you have the sales process, and then you have maybe even a trained sales team. They actually implemented the sales process, and they're using the right technology, and it's differentiating, and it's helping them go to the next level. You know, and, and technically anybody can do that. Like anybody can implement all those things. Um, what we think, though, still at the at the heart of the reality is that people buy from people. Uh, who they like, they trust and respect. And that person uh, isn't limited by a software code, uh, isn't limited by somebody who's going to have to upgrade their their operating system, which is super valuable. It's technology. What they have is an unlimited potential and they have, uh, they have a, a uniqueness about who they are. And that at the end of the day, the more confident, the more connected they are to who they truly are, and, and the personal growth of that person, um, then they, they have that with all these beautiful tools that a company like a Capos has, then that levels them up to a whole new level. And so at the end of the day, we're in the people business. You know, we're, we're impacting people. Um, when someone joins our platform in terms of if I'm, a, if I'm a roofing or a large commercial electrical or mechanical contractor, that's a platform. And when a salesperson comes onto their company, they see that platform to help them be a vehicle to be successful in life. If that platform doesn't just create great business processes and help great, have a great culture, but actually provides opportunities for them to personally transform uh, to who they are destined to be, that investment um, is, is very, that, that's a whole new level of growth. And so a big part of the conferences that we put on or the content we put together is sales process. But at the end of the day, it's also knowing yourself, being able to be aware of your emotions, knowing how to handle those emotions, the lies that are, you know, limiting beliefs that come in versus the truth of who you are, uh, because that will center you, and keep you connected uh, in, in who you in showing up at the highest level you can be for the people around you in the in the context of all these great implementable items that a company like a Capos can put together. So uh, we care about personal transformation, and that's probably what they're speaking to. And the Transform Conference is the number one event for growth-minded contractors. That's our tagline. 
because they know people know if they're going to grow, they have to grow their people. And that's really the, the variable that I think he's talking about. But of course, we, we brought our partners who have great technology. We implement great sales training and process. We have great coaches. Uh, I think that's what they're talking about is because we want to see um, work not just be a place where you transact with your employer or with your prospects and customers, but there's a deeper connection because I think we all want to feel a purpose and a meaning. And, um, you know, we, we want to feel like we're, we're, we're living out passionately uh, what we do, where we're at without feeling, you know, there's this massive separation all the time. So I think K-Post cares about their people and they saw that they are got to be around content that's never been never been presented in our, in our industry before, I can guarantee it. Hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I, I know, again, it was impactful. And you and I both had the, the fortune to be at Best of Success uh, last week in Scottsdale. And I got to rub shoulders uh, with K-Post and, and other companies that we both have worked with. And uh, there was a lot of those good vibes going on around about this different approach to building your business that really has nothing to do directly with construction. It's, it is about building people. Yeah. And, and ironically, it was funny because after uh, best of success, um, I had a couple of days to visit local customers in the Phoenix area. And then we did a, a little mini conference um, there on Friday uh, in the Phoenix area. And one of the large customers of ours that I went to visit, I was asking him about their trajectory and, and, you know, how things are going for them in their market. And he said, you know, yeah, we're always building buildings. We're always, you know, building stuff. But he said, honestly, as the president of, of this large organization, my entire job focus and scope is about building people. That's my job. I'm here to build people. And then those people help us build buildings, but the people have to come first. And it, and it, it made me think of you and what, what, uh, you know, you and I had been talking about, previously in the week, uh, just at best of success. And, and here we are again, uh, beginning of the next week, having a similar conversation. So it's fresh on my mind. And I think a lot of people need to hear this different approach and, uh, and would be well to kind of dig into what you're doing to serve the market and help contractors not only build their backlog and build their pipeline and be more efficient on the jobs that they're working on, but uh, really reinvest in their greatest resource, which is their people. Absolutely. It's, it's something that, um, you know, will shine through, you know, in your brand, you know, when somebody is representing you and they feel like they're glowing because, you know, they're, 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 they're speaking glowingly about the brand and the company and the culture, and then their representation uh, is trained, it's confident, it's, it's care all whatever it is you want to exemplify when that when that teammate um you invest into them in their personal growth or their sales training for example or their you hire more people to manage accounts or to prospect in the to bird dog projects before they're out to bid and now you're writing the scope and you're you're leaning into creating scope uh for as a as a trusted partner um Man, that's that that'll that'll really pay off and on your bottom line. I mean, if you can increase your margins, um, you know, by ten percent, fifteen percent, because of your investment on the front end with the people that are representing you. I mean, at the end of the day, sixty percent of people what they remember in your in the customer experience is in the sales process. So, I mean, what you say, how the person said it, how they you know made that person feel in the process. I can promise you this, if every salesperson feels good in their own skin, um, is truly caring, they're truly authentic, they build meaningful relationships, they ask great questions, they care, they create value, they present within context. And uh, that's that's going to create the customer experience. That's ultimately going to set the precedence for, are we going to continue to work with this contractor? Are we going to continue to pay a little bit more to work with them and choose them as our trusted partner and help us? avoid pitfalls and, and by shortcutting and going low bid and eventually costing us more in the long run, but we're spending a little bit more to work with this contractor. That's the people in the front lines. And what's cool is that the sales team, the sales function is very underdeveloped in our space. There's a lot of project managers, a lot of estimators, a lot of order takers that know the space. But what if you just had a really high quality, high integrity, relational, consultative value selling professionals on the front lines partnering with the technical experts in your business 
uh, you would definitely find that you're having conversations that they're not having, that your prospects aren't having with anybody else because no one's investing to go deeper and sooner into the buying process um, to, to advise them on what to do. And I think when people do that and they embrace that, uh, it, it separates everybody and there's a big impact on the bottom line. Yeah, so it sounds like you're a big proponent of having direct sales teams that work for the company that are part of the team full time, uh, as opposed to just outsourcing it and you know trying to get someone to just generate a bunch of leads and throw stuff over the fence. Is that right? Yeah, I think that there's you know relationship managers, right? So it's like they're they're managing an account. Like let's just say even in a new construction environment, which I think most of your listeners would rather work directly for as the prime, which I know they would. But let's just even go at like a more challenging sales environment, like a GC client, right? So let's just say that. I mean, even if you had the bandwidth relationally to go spend time at a, at a game or watch a baseball game or go to a football game or or do something outside of uh, just talking about the bid and emailing it to them, which is what they'd like. I mean, you're out there, you're able to invest in that relationship. You're going to have conversations that you're able to have conversations that they're, they're not going to have over an email. Um, and at the end of the day, you're able to lower the resistance and, and go deeper to create the value. Cause I can tell you if you guys are not the cheapest, but they go with the cheapest, I guarantee you that there's going to be some longer term financial impact on them going with the cheapest rather than spending a little bit more to work with you on your project. I can guarantee that, but it's hard to get those conversations conducted without it being in person. And then on another note, if it's direct prime, I mean, at the end of like, the other day, people want to just, they don't know everything about what you do. They don't want to pretend to know everything. Some people do like facility managers, maybe a little bit more than a property manager, but if they like and trust you and they believe in you and you do what you say you're going to do and you show up consistently and then you ask for more, they'll give you more. But if you do less than what you say you're going to do and then you ask for more, they won't give you more. So I think it's just having high integrity people on the front lines that are relationally selling. And the other thing too is like commercial services and commercial projects, you don't really typically, people aren't buying, you know, responding to a cold email or they're not buying, responding to a Google ad. Sometimes they Google search, but they're going to want to say, hey, who, who are the, who are the contractors in the area that, that we could trust that have what they, they have the, all the stuff, right. They have the bonding, they have all the insurance, they have the safety rating, they have the quality, they, they have a track record of doing jobs like this. I mean, they're going to want to work with somebody who's referred referrals don't come without true relationship and relationships can be created, nurtured and developed through set the, pri the proper sales representation. Um, and as you're growing rapidly, I mean, it depends on how fast you're growing It's going to make it more and more challenging, but, I think there's nothing like having um, a sales focus with people who that's their job is to get people to lead them to make the right decision for their building, their, their property. Um, and oftentimes estimators just aren't the best at that. They're very technical or they're just bidding and it's like, take it or leave it. Like they don't really care about the person as much. It's rare to have somebody who's ultra high level sales, ultra high level estimator and project management. Um, I mean, you, you, the owners are like, well, I can do that, you know, but that's, you're the owner and you're different, but you could find people that could spend 10 years with you or more. If you have a great culture, you care about them and, uh, you train them and they can represent you. Yeah. So it sounds like too, uh, you're keying into the differences between maybe the personality profile or what a salesperson needs to thrive versus an estimator or maybe an ad man or accountant or payroll personnel. I mean, what, what makes salespeople tick differently and what do you think is important that companies should be focused on to try and help those sales teams thrive? Well, one thing I'll just say first off is like just doing, having somebody who does sales activity is, is something that most people aren't doing. <laughs> most people aren't prospecting. Most people aren't. So just sales activity being done is great. But when you look at the type of people I mean, you certainly want people with a high level of emotional intelligence who can navigate and build relationships that are more than surface level pretty quickly. Um, but, you know, we have 21 core competencies that we measure. So the desire, their commitment to be great at sales, their coachability, their figured out factor, their uh, motivation and how in which they're motivated, whether it's intrinsically, altruistically, extrinsically. Uh, we, we believe that there's some limiting or sabotaging beliefs 
or supported beliefs that either are going to help or, you know, impact negatively the salesperson's ability to fulfill high level competencies. So some of those are like high need for approval. Can they be emotionally stable and like present in the moment? Um, you know, do they have uh, do they recover well from rejection? Are they comfortable discussing money? Uh, what are those, those belief systems that can either help them or not help them? And then we work on those mindsets and then we have, uh, things like consultative selling, relationship building, selling value, prospecting, you know, or hunting, um, you know, presenting within context, CRM savvy, sales process, technology usage. Those are all the competencies that would ultimately make them really, really good. But we have to measure all that to help them. I don't care if they're kind of shy necessarily, if they're really, if they're doing the activity and then they're, they're asking the right questions and they can develop those skills and they have the desire and commitment. Then that's, that's exciting for me um, to see people grow there. I think you asked another question. I think I went on my tangent and I forgot. Well, it. yeah, no, basically you're, uh, I, I mean, what, what is different about the salesperson versus, you know, other roles, what, what should be focused on for companies to get more out of, out of those uh, team players, which sounds like you listen. Right. Right. So like salespeople, I mean, they're, they, they should be, you know, prospecting. Um, they should be building relationships, uh, spending time with people going outside of just business talk, connecting with them. Um, they should be having qualifying type conversations. So they should be asking questions around, um, you know, their current situation, desired situation. Um, they should be asking questions. I mean, estimators are like, I don't, I don't want to do that. I just want to, <laughs> I just want to tell them what I think they should do. And they'll write the bid and if they want it, great. If they don't, great, fine. Um, where salespeople are saving the estimators time by making sure that they're actually qualified and committed and have a timeline. Um, and there's just enough meaningful back and forth that, you know, the salesperson or the estimator is not in that subservient sales trap where they're just like bidding, you know, uh, to somebody who's kind of lording over them and they feel like they're hoping for the job where a salesperson can kind of create that equal business stature, that partner relationship by asking some of those earlier questions, protecting the, the, protecting the estimator from saying too much too early to the prospect or the client. And then timing the delivery of the solution in a way that you actually have the decision makers there, all the things that really impact, you know, actually help deals become closable. I'm telling you right now, when the estimator sales models in place, they're 10, they're 10 percent close rate, unless they're literally only doing work with people that they've worked with for a long time. And that's it. Um, Growth minded companies are trying to increase, you know, revenue and, and take things to the next level are going to need to, you know, know how to find new customers. And if you want to go find private cl clients, right, the negotiated market, the, the direct market, the prime market, you got to find those and you got to make space in someone's calendar to go out there and, and, um, and, and bird dog those opportunities. And uh, so that's, those are some of the major differences. Most estimators or project managers don't have the bandwidth to do that in their day to day. I mean, and have a family and live a normal, like, you know, balanced life um, without burning people out. Yeah. They have to physically, they've got physical things that they have to accomplish that, you know, it's like those, those motions require activity specific to them. And so a sales guy has got more latitude, hopefully to invest their time in the better activities to build those relationships and build that value. Like you said. So yeah, I think you're, uh, your spot on there. So, so when you, when you talk about investing in salespeople and them helping um, their prospective customers feel more value because of that relationship, uh, hopefully they're avoiding the bidding war and the, you know, like you mentioned, just being the low ball price, uh, you know, on the bid sheet, what, what other areas do you think are important that contractors can do aside from just having great salespeople that are good relationship builders? Are there other tactics or strategies that you recommend? Yeah. I mean, implementing a sales process that's consultative and coaching them regularly and looking at deals post proposal delivery and having, you know, just an ongoing coaching relationship. I think that's the biggest thing is, um, you know, if you have one, you know, quarter's worth of sales cycles, um, the outcome is going to be the outcome, but if you have data and then you have some sort of information on how 
that conversation went and then you can coach to that outcome. I mean, you can dramatically shorten the development path uh, and speed of somebody leveling up and becoming better. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all struggling with the same thing. I mean, you got salespeople out there selling and there's nobody watching how they're doing in real time to be able to coach them. I'm a big sports guy. I played football. I love uh, play baseball. I mean, the coaches literally look at film. The coaches look at them in real time. And, and we out there are trying to rely on our backlog being filled up and paying our, our employees and our people with, with sales professionals that we don't even like watch or coach. And it's just crazy. And we're like, and, and it's crazy because I'm, I struggle with the same thing, you know? It's like, so having somebody watching them and actually being able to improve them, a, a coach and a trainer, and then having somebody internally becoming proficient at that, that's really what our goal is because that's a sustainable transformation is when there's a sales leader who does have bandwidth to coach, but we do that, you know, cause we know we need, we all need it. Yeah. You're building mini coaches, right? <laughs> Definitely. So in, in the course of, I mean, you've been doing this a few years with Sales Transformation Group. I know you worked with follow-up CRM before that, which is cool. What a, what a great uh, basis for you to have uh, your vision for what you're doing today, because obviously everything these sales guys do needs to be documented in the CRM to give that real-time feedback so that you can get that proper coaching. But what are some of the things that you've learned through this process so far that that you, that are surprising to you? And then what are some of the things that you're like, yeah, I totally knew this was the right way and, and it's it's absolutely working and here's how. Well, what's surprising to me is, you know, how impactful, you know, having a vision can be to attract talent. Um, a lot of times guys have their head kind of buried and, you know, busy in the business, but when they do take enough time to work on it and kind of, create a compelling future, um, they're able to really, they're able to attract great people because there's great money in this industry and there's great opportunity. And it's, um, I, I think that the companies who are trying to learn how to make their, their brand and their company culture attractive, or uh, I think that when that starts to come in, man, it really changes the game. I love watching companies start to hire talent that could, that they're proud to have represent them that are articulate, professional, well-spoken, pleasant to be around. Um, I just, I, I'm, I'm really impressed by the companies that are doing that. Um, it's surprising to me how, um, how busy people get though, and how sometimes they, they just don't have the time to do it. Um, so I, it, it's, it's a, it, there's a lot of surprises, but what doesn't surprise me is that when you invest in people, um, there's a, there's always an ROI. Sometimes it's not that measurable right away, but um, yeah, that's really it. Like there's there's companies that are starting to do some really innovative things that you know I'm super proud to, to watch. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know there's probably all all types of facets in your training programs and your protocol. Are there are there areas that you think uh, individuals struggle with more commonly that you're like, okay, yeah, this is usually a problem that low hanging fruit that you can address pretty quickly. Yeah. We, we find that a lot of our, our customers don't know how or have the time to think about like doing their own sales training experiences. They're kind of, they get stuck and when they do it, they're really, they do a poor job of it. So we found that um, having them pay for us to go out there and facilitate that, really unlocks something in them that they didn't know they had, which is like, wow, I could use this conference room for more than, you know, um, this, like I can, you know, we, and they start to create a culture. I think when, you know, they need that help, they need that push, but once that's there and they're on autopilot, not really, but they're on the trajectory, they, they can, they can make some huge strides. But I think that it does take that aha moment, like tell, show, do, you know, then you want, then you do it and what, let me watch you do it. I think that uh, people respond well to it, but I think it's been, it's been harder to get people to self implement than I thought it would be. Um, that's why we went from in-person online. So I went from in-person one-on-one -on -one to online and self implement. And then, um, and then now we add both, we add in-person back in as a way to really help them break through because they could have a bad experience by just feeling unprepared. 
Uh, but now we can help them by, you know, because we have experience to do that. Well, the, and the challenge, and we find this a lot too, and I think it's just common in all industries. Uh, um, you've got people trying to multitask, so to speak, for lack of a better term. And they're really not plugged in necessarily just because it's streaming through and the volume's up. They might be doing three other things or texting somebody or looking at their calendar, whatever it is, and, uh, you know, sending out emails. So they're not 100 percent engaged in what you're doing. But when you're in the room that, you know, they're they're probably not going to do a lot of those things that are going to distract them. So they're going to be like, right. once they're bought in, maybe then they can take the ball and run with it more because they're excited. But it, sometimes it takes like getting out of our day to day, you know, motions. Yeah. You know, jump start the process, right? Right. I love that. So, so with uh, with those experiences, you've got, you know, you you guys have, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of customers all over the place, different industries. Do you think there's um, some common themes even between tr- different trades, um, large companies, small companies? I mean, what are some other common things that the companies that are listening might be able to? be introspective on and think, you know, what I could do better here or that, yeah, that's a real challenge for us there. And, and maybe what are some things they could do to improve that and address those things? Yeah. I mean, every, every company I talk to struggles with, with prospecting and generating referrals. Every one of them, every company I talk to struggles with understanding their pipeline and forecasting consistently and accurately what the revenue is for backlog planning um, I see that all the time. A lot of companies struggle to sell value. Um, you know, a lot of companies struggle to close, um, you know, the large profitable jobs at the, at the, at the pace they want. Um, I see a lot of people struggle with that. A lot of people struggle with technology integration, which is something we we're, we are big fans of and help help with. And a lot of them struggle to motivate and inspire their team and hold their sales team accountable. So they're under skilled. They're, uh, they're, they're not competent yet. Um, but uh, here's another one. Ugh, the people struggle with recruiting. Um, they struggle to recruit talent to, into their organization. So what we want to do is transform their existing environment to something that's exciting and has a vision and a plan. And with our platform, our LMS platform, help them create content that makes it sticky so that they want to continue to use our content and the content they put in there. And then they have a great onboarding, professional onboarding experience. And so we actually help them create video recruiting funnels that they can run Facebook and LinkedIn and indeed ads to the funnel. It's a page, it shares their vision, their core values, who they're looking for, speaks to the prospective candidate really, you know, directly. And then they do some other amazing things and then they apply and they take a sales aptitude test, which is something where we provide and then it's automatically set up. We have a recruiting process that's automated and robust because, you know, eventually they, they can't hire another family member, you know, um, and um, they, they then they keep salespeople too long who are really average because they don't have a backlog or sorry, a pipeline of candidates that they can turn on with a switch. They like feel like it's super daunting to get somebody. But if you can identify, attract, train and up level somebody pretty fast, you don't have to be married to this sales guy because he's underperforming or this person. So if somebody has a recruiting process, it creates, puts more, gives more leverage to the employer to have a higher standard and hold people accountable um, and not, you know, remain tolerant of mediocrity. And that's something that we're, you know, big proponents of because you want high performing at the end of the day. You don't want to have a bunch of average people who have a locker room, you know, full of, you know, underperformers. And that's, it's a challenge for everybody, even me. I mean, we're challenged right now, Um, but, you know, we know the solution and it works. I love that. I'm really glad that you brought that part up because it's really a, a soup to nuts end to end solution that you're providing. And I know you partner with a lot of technology companies that have tools um, they, they work together, like you talk about integration and some of these other things. So what you're offering is a lot more than just some sales training. I mean, you, you've got a whole program that a company can run through and learn how to sharpen the axe blade that they already have. And then also get some new axe blades in motion so that they can they can chop down a lot more trees than they're able to do with their current situation. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's a 
it's a it's it's a platform to plug into for sure. So the so what do you you know uh, what do you enjoy most about this process that that just keeps you hungry and fired up and and loving what you do every day? Assuming you love what you do every day, I think you do. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> um, you know, most, I, day. <laughs> most days. I mean, uh, as you grow, you, things get harder, and so I think I'm. Uh, at the stage of a business, I had a startup CRM I was a part of, and then I, this is my company and we're growing. We're, we're struggling with some of our own growing pains right now. And I feel some of the the pressures that some of our customers feel when they start to work with us. <laughs> so, uh, but no, but bottom line is I, I enjoy my customers' results at the end of the day. Um, I want to make a, an immediate business impact, but I think, you know, if as that's happening and then there it rolls into a personal, more eternal level impact where... You know, people are, it sounds really, you know, maybe out of the ordinary for this industry, but I, I do want to see people um, have more confidence and then have a better home life. I want them to have better marriages. I want them to have better relationships with their kids without sacrificing money. And I want them to have money without sacrificing their family and their well-being. So I'm, I'm like living in the tension of having it all as well, right? And I just, I think that that abundant, um, life message is something I'm trying to infuse into our customer experience because at the end of the day, if I'm a salesperson, I want to work for a company, I'm going to look up to that leader and take notes on everything they do, not just the sales they make, but who they are. If they're a person I want to be like when I grow or I feel like a lot of who they are, I feel want to be mentored by, that's going to create, um, and it's, it's going to differentiate you from other people who are employing people in your market. And so I think that that component makes me the, the happiest is when leaders are leveling up and everything's getting better. I mean, I just came back from a commercial roofing company. The guy started working with us. He was doing a million and a half in roofing, like, uh, I mean, a commercial roofing company. So that's not a very big commercial roofing company. But uh, yeah, I mean, he jumped into, he got the next year, you know, a couple of years, it was like a year and a half. And then he finally got to. 4 million. Um, and then last year, well, this year he'll do 8 million. Next year he's going to do 12. And, and now he's got a sales manager. He's got four sales guys and he's a sales, he's, he, you know, manages his house accounts. Um, and that's amazing to watch like an owner running all, wearing all the hats, running the business, doing a million and a half in business, pressure on his marriage, pressure on his family, pressure on his health. The guy's 30 pounds overweight. He's going to start getting training. One of our partners is a personal training uh, company with an online platform, I'm pushing him to our customers so that they can start to, you know, just get into that type of change. Because at the end of the day, like I want him to, him and his wife to be, can't keep their hands off each other. I want their kids <laughs> to grow. I want their, uh, their sales team to be fired up to be there. I want a sales manager who's helping their sales team get better. I want them to recruit and hire more salespeople. I want them to have more service work and more re-roofs as well as a result of service. And uh, the ability to have a bigger and bigger Christmas party every year so that you can help more families. I mean, that's, that gets me excited. Yeah, that's beautiful and well stated. And, and, uh, and I know you truly do practice what you preach and I've known you a long time and, uh, and you definitely emulate those values that you're, you're professing and that you're trying to share. And I, I applaud your efforts because it's, uh, that's what we're in the people business too. And, and, you know, we want to bless lives every day. And the more of those we can bless, the more of those folks can bless other people and, uh, just uh, let let all the ships in the harbor, you know, rise together with that tide. So, so that uh, this has been a lot of fun, Ryan. I I do have just a couple more questions I wanted to wrap up with, if we could. Um, first off, what uh, what's the one thing that you know that you really hope people take away from our conversation today, as far as action and what they could do moving forward to be different and to be better. Build and grow your sale and your your sales function. Like develop your sales process and have people to go execute it and and set yourself free from every job or your, the backlog being on your shoulders. Like get get a sales team built. Um, trust that a process and coaching will actually give you the confidence to remove yourself from every new lead and um and, and you know and, and level up your business. You know um, if you if you, if you invest, let's say, I mean, let's just talk, what's, what's your average customer size, Mike? I mean, maybe you don't feel comfortable saying that, but I'm just throwing out like average employees or uh, let's, let's say it's a hundred, 150 employees, 100, 150 employee companies probably doing, you know, 40 million a year, 30 million a year. Right. So if they're doing 30 million a year and their net net is uh, on average, you know, 
point, let's call it like 5%. I'm just throwing out numbers here. So that's one and a half million, um, you know, let's say an EBITDA, right? I mean, if they could increase their margins and have more time to work on their business and they invest, you know, let's just call it a couple hundred thousand a year and salaries, commissions and training and courses and processes and stuff like that. But they can increase that from five to 8% because they have better jobs and they, uh, you know, now you can spend more time getting better clock or whatever. I mean, that, that changes the game, right? So if you have that percentage and it goes from one and a half, I mean, I just erased my calculator, but I mean, uh, that would be some big ROI. Um, so I just think that I think at the end of the day, I want to see people not undervalue the sales function of the company and, and just know that it can be delegated. There are talented people who want to work for great companies and, but they want to feel invested into and know that they're set up for success. Um, if you guys do that, whether it's internally or partnering with a company like us, um, it's going to pay off and you're going to finally be set free to live in a brand new world, which is I'm a CEO. Wow. Or I'm a leader of a team. I don't do everything. Um, that's going to set you free. And then you can start to level up your game and, and take your business to the next level. If you're growth minded and you want to change, right? That's what I'm, you know, whether, whether it's exiting the business through a, a sale or selling it back to your employees, um, if you, everything revolves around you, you're going to, it's going to be a less valuable business, but if you have a, a good EBITDA, but it, then, then you have a system and process that's repeatable. I mean, that's just going to make your valuation go up. Um, and even if you want to keep it for and run it for the next 20 years, you're going to have more margin to invest back in your business. Awesome. Well stated and, uh, and great advice for anyone that's listening on the podcast today. Um, and lastly here, Ryan, just before we wrap up, what is uh, the thing that you are most grateful for in your personal life? Say my spouse, my wife. Yeah, she's, um, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, you've heard people say, I feel like a lion in a cage and all these kind of <laughs> super masculine things. I mean, I, I, um, I, I, it's maturing over time, but man, she's, uh, she's been an incredible, uh, you know, spouse that's holding it down at the home. We have our fifth kid on the way. We've, we've been married 11 years. So we had a full busy household. Uh, we traveled and, you know, been from, uh, you know, Florida to Maui and I pulled her off her dream, her dream Island of living to Dallas and <laughs> um, for a season, hopefully we can go back, but she's been, um, she's who I'm most grateful for what I'm most grateful for. She's allowed me to do what I do. Um, while still having a family and, uh, um, for her, you know, I, I don't, I just don't want to be on the wrong side of the statistic. Uh, if you know what I mean, as it relates to, to being married and I see it happen a lot and I push hard and I, and I love to win. I hate to lose. Um, but that would be the biggest loss is not seeing your family stay together. And, uh, and for those who have had to experience that, no shame on you or anything, but you know, um, I personally, have, you know, seen two, two divorces happen in my family growing up. My mom married and was divorced twice. And, um, that was pretty impactful, you know, to me. And so to be able to go after business and help and change and impact and income and family and all of it remain to connected while that's all happening is it takes an incredible partner. And so my wife is, uh, who I'm grateful for. Oh, beautifully stated. I love it, man. Good job. Well, uh, I'm sure you're a lucky man and, and she's a lucky lady too. <laughs> so, well, thanks for joining us today, brother. Appreciate you. It's uh, always fun to catch up. Glad to see you around the circuit a little bit uh, and looking forward to the next opportunity we have to connect up. Thanks, Mike. Super good to be with you today, man. All right, buddy. Be well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on the Mobile Workforce Podcast, sponsored by About Time Technologies and WorkMax. If you liked the conversation we had today, or able to learn anything new or helpful, please make sure to follow us on our WorkMax page on LinkedIn and on Instagram at WorkMax underscore. And subscribe to the show on iTunes or your preferred podcast platform so you will never miss another insightful episode. Also, if you enjoyed the podcast, please leave us a five-star rating and review and share the show with your friends and colleagues. Your support means the world to us and will allow us to continue providing impactful information with others looking to improve their results in their business and, in turn, their life.